LTV News is back for the new year and new season. And with that comes more news. Hello, I'm Erin Holly, And I'm Maria Johnson. LaSalle professor making a difference in Eagles themed bar and an exotic new condiment? You don't want to miss this news. So stay tuned. You're watching LTV News where the action never stops. Hello and welcome to LTV News, where we bring you everything from 20th and Olney Avenue, Philadelphia, and the world. There's a lot to catch up on in the next half hour, as Tori had the opportunity to speak to Dr. Caitlin Taylor about LaSalle's Inside Out class. I'm sure we've all heard about the amazing internships and programs that LaSalle has to offer students, but this one is a little extra magical. Disney hosts a college program, a culinary program, and many other professional internship opportunities across various departments. Last semester, one of LaSalle's own students, junior Lauren Terendi, completed the Disney College program and lived and worked there over the course of the fall semester. Disney is hosting Zoom sessions that are available to LaSalle students to learn more about these programs. These sessions will be held online on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 o'clock to 3.45 and Wednesdays from 12 to 12.45. Students can contact the Career Center on Handshake to learn more about the sessions and get the Zoom links. You don't want to miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. In more LaSalle news, Associate Marketing Professor Megan Pierce and her students are making a difference in underprivileged areas. The function of ID cards and how many people living in those neighborhoods simply do not have one. Pierce collaborated with Face to Face, Germantown, a nonprofit organization for underprivileged Philadelphians, to evaluate its effects on its support services. Pierce and her students focused on their analysis on face to face Germantown's efforts to provide its visitors with personal identity cards, as well as the, Im the impact of those efforts, with the exception of two semesters affected by the COVID 19 pandemic. Pierce's students have completed comparable research projects through service learning courses at LaSalle School of Business each semester. Way to go, LaSalle. Take a look at Tori's interview with sociology and criminal justice professor, Dr. Caitlin Taylor, about an untraditional class she is teaching this semester. Hi, my name is Tori Walker, and today I'll be interviewing Dr. Taylor, who is a criminal justice professor here at LaSalle University. This semester, he teaches a criminal justice course located in a, at a correctional facility where students, LaSalle students, and people who are incarcerated get to learn from this great professor. Hi, Dr. Taylor, thank you for stopping by on the show today. Absolutely, thanks so much for inviting me. Definitely, no problem. So first, talk about briefly, you know, your experience with being a teacher here at LaSalle. How long has it been? So I've been at LaSalle, this is my 10th year. Wow. Um, so I came right out of my doctoral program, and so this is kind of the only home university I know. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. What made you really want to pursue a career in like criminal justice and um, criminal justice reform, all of that, you know? Um, so I've always been interested in issues of racial and social inequality. My undergraduate degree is actually in history, something kind of unrelated to what I do now. Um, but I realize there's really no more stark context to study racial and social inequality than in the criminal legal system. Um, so that's really kind of how I got into this as a field. Gosh, so I know this semester, this is the first time I really heard about this course. Um, so talk a little bit about what the course is and you know how you like it so far. The course is going great. Um, this is the first time that we're back in person or this wow. semester is actually hybrid where um, some weeks via Zoom, other weeks in person. Um, but I did one online course during the pandemic of mm -hmm. Inside Out um, and then had taught previously to the pandemic a couple of times. So it's great to be to be back in person. The students are really wonderful. We had our first um, combined class with our uh, what we call the inside students or the students who are currently incarcerated mm -hmm. and the outside students, our LaSalle students, um, finally got to meet and come together at a meeting at the, our first class at the jail yesterday, which was really wonderful. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I want to know, like, um, I don't know, when you think of, you know, teaching at an incarcerated jail or anything like that, was there any maybe hesitation or anything you had? Um, you know, just, 
either from the students and yourself, like any hesitation from the both of you guys? Sure, so not really um, any hesitations for me. Um, I had spent a good deal of time in prisons prior to ever teaching an inside out class. Mm -hmm. um, and so I knew that our prisons and jails are filled with people who um, are extremely bright and talented and yeah. skilled in so many ways. Um, I think there are oftentimes student hesitations. It's mm -hmm. kind of like fear of the unknown. Um, a gentleman who actually was formerly serving a, a life sentence in Pennsylvania and had a sentence um, commuted and has been now home and working for the inside out office uh -huh. always describes this as the walls were not just there to keep me in but to keep you out. Um, mm -hmm. His name is Tyrone Wirtz and so I, I really try to reiterate that with students when they have this like fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. um, that that's kind of the way the system is designed to be keeping people out as well so we really should take advantage of this as an opportunity um, to be inside. I love that. So what is your why? Well, why are you so passionate about this? Well, oh, hard question. Right. Um, so I want to live in a world where all people are treated with mercy and compassion. I want my young children to grow up in a world where people are, are treated with mercy and compassion. And there's a lot of things in our criminal legal system that don't treat people with mercy and compassion, mm -hmm. right? So. Um, the way our country has locked people up in recent decades is historically and geographically unprecedented. Nowhere ever in the history of humankind have, have people done this. Um, and so, you know, I think that being able to give people the opportunity to realize that and that there are ways to, to do things differently is something that really continues to fuel me. So talk about the course so far. How's, how fun has it, has it been for both LaSalle students and people who are incarcerated? Are they getting, do you think they're getting something out of it, you think? Yes, absolutely. So I mentioned we had our first combined meeting yesterday. The first week we meet with inside and outside students separately to be able to go over the rules and people are more um, comfortable sometimes sharing things that they might be concerned about when we meet separate. So after we had our first combined meeting or during our first combined meeting yesterday, we did a lot of community building exercises like icebreakers and getting to know one another, um, all types of exercises to really make sure that we're building a space that feels um, safe for people to speak openly and honestly about really controversial and difficult um, issues. Um, so the whole goal of the course is to be able to say, you know, what are prisons for? What are things the justice system does well? What does it maybe not do so well? How can we envision perhaps a different way um, of doing things? And so obviously those being really tough tough issues to discuss, we got to do a lot of this work up front to make sure um, we build those open lines of communication. Definitely, so I definitely know that you have a passion for this. Um, so I'm curious for like, what keeps you going? What keeps you motivated in seeing, you know, these students out of there you're getting, learning from the course? Um, you know, what, what is, like I said, what is your why? What keeps you really motivated into teaching this course? So I think seeing a passion grow in students and a passion for learning, a passion for generating knowledge in a different way is really um, fueling for me. So the course is considered a transformative education model. So, you know, in a lot of, of classes, we kind of go by this traditional format where the instructor stands up at the front and drops the knowledge oh. onto the students, right? Yeah. Um, the basis behind this course is really different mm -hmm. in that the idea is that knowledge is generated through small group discussions in which people share their lived experience and expertise and reactions to different readings we have. Um, and so it's a much more kind of ground up um, knowledge generation. And so that is something that I feel really passionate about and continues, it continues to motivate me. It always is kind of odd because I'm there as like facilitator, not instructor necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and so making sure that I'm, I'm doing the work ahead of time to build those um, strong relationships so people can can generate knowledge in different ways. Definitely, I love that. Man, I wish I joined the course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should mention that there's it's not just um, out of criminal justice, but we have faculty members in religion, somebody mm -hmm. in business um, who are trained inside out instructors as well, political science. Um, so hopefully now, um, as the pandemic is uh, not in the same way that it was at least, we'll be able to do more yeah. courses again. I love their conversation for sure. 
Well, Professor, that's all we have for today. So thanks for stopping by, and feel free to stop by the Communication Center whenever you want. You have a free pass whenever you want. Oh, so wonderful. Thank you, so thank you so much, Tori. Definitely. Thank you. Now back to the desk with Erin and Casey. The McCready Family Foundation has given LaSalle a gift of $100,000 so that the Department of Psychology and its program in clinical psychology can better meet the needs of the community in Northwest Philadelphia and the surrounding area in terms of mental health. The program's training clinic will also be supported by the award and students will gain from improved curricula and programs. This six-figure donation from the McCready Family Foundation places LaSalle, its PhD program, and a training clinic that serves the neighborhood next door's mental health needs better. This award will improve the psychological service options and patient experience through long-lasting programmatic and clinic adjustments. Additionally, LaSalle students will benefit from a more thorough training program that will be beneficial to both present and potential clients. LaSalle recently has received $250,000 commitment from Philadelphia-based business leadership organized for Catholic schools. According to the university, quote, the pledge will guarantee entry into LEAP program for students enrolled in Archdiocese of Philadelphia high schools who are also receiving BLOCS scholarship assistance, end quote. LaSalle is hoping the LEAP initiative will keep striving to make making college more affordable for our future explorers. With the spring semester well underway, LaSalle hosted a campus involvement fair on Thursday the 26th. Donnie and I had the chance to learn more about all the clubs LaSalle has to offer. Check it out. We are here today in the Union Ballroom for the Involvement and Activities Fair where LaSalle students can come check out all the amazing clubs, opportunities that we have here at LaSalle. So come along with me and learn more about what we have to offer here today. What organization are you here representing today? I'm representing our AIDS outreach program and our neighborhood tutoring program. Alpha Sigma Tau. I'm here representing OLAS, Organization of Latin American Students. I think it's really important that LaSalle hosts events like these so students can like learn what's out there, explore their horizons, and like really get involved with the community and the people around them. What is the goal of your organization tabling here today? Just to kind of let people know what AST is about, you know, our national philanthropy is Women's Wellness Initiative wellness initiative and then our local philanthropy is women against abuse and I think that's a very important topic for people to you know realize and understand to, to help and, and support. Um, so our goal always is to represent our Latino culture and Hispanic culture and to unite us but um, so that's obviously our general goal today but we're really promoting our gala that we're gonna have on April 21st in the ballroom it's gonna be Havana themed um, very formal we're gonna have a DJ and music so we're um, just advertising that today. <laughs> this is Aaron Holly and Don Yargo for LTV News, signing off. It's time for our first break, but coming up, hear about how a small bar in Philly completely changed its image in light of the Eagles Super Bowl. Stay tuned to learn more. According to statistics, 40 million adults suffer from depression or anxiety. One in four college students are affected by this as well. You never know who is going through something, so you should always be kind to one another.
Famous artist Alex DeCorte is opening a, up a showcase in Philadelphia titled The Street. This exhibit features numerous pieces of DeCorte's pop art. DeCorte took from inspiration from many pop artists, pop culture, and personal memory. According to DeCorte, quote, This is a love letter to Philadelphia and also the school that took me in and showed me much of what I know today, end quote. These pieces of work are currently on display on Rosen. Dwarf Gallery and is only there until February, so go check it out. A Philly pop-up bar who is known for their holiday-themed decor ditched their usual decorations to celebrate the Philadelphia's victory in playing in the Super Bowl. Tinsel on 24th and Sampson Street has launched Tinsel Takes Flight, a bar with Eagles-themed memorabilia, murals, and TVs for fans to watch the Eagles play. Special drinks and food will be served, including Hurt So Good and Philly Philly. This pop-up bar will run through Super Bowl Sunday. Students aren't the only ones displaying a shift in behavior following the pandemic. It seems parents are experiencing social troubles of their own. Parents have been reported coming to their children's schools in order to seek retribution against teachers, staff, and even other students on November 10th. One student's 58-year-old grandmother was maced following a dispute where she, where she then stabbed a student in the finger. Last school year, a total of 98 reported were filed of either assault, harassment, or threats by students' family members. Kirby Weinkoff, school psychologist, seeks to explain where the root of this aggravation may be, stating, quote, These families are stressed out, overwhelmed, and not sure how they get their needs met. It's not okay, but I can understand where it's coming from, end quote. With teaching shortages already on the rise, students and parents hope tension may ease and quickly. The visiting New York Giants experienced water trouble at their hotel on Saturday, January 21st, before their big playoff game against the Eagles. The source of the problem was reported to be a busted water pipe postponing access to the bathroom and showers. After a few hours, the issue was fixed and the team could resume preparing for the game. Giants fans have already pointed fingers at the close timing of the incident with the team's arrival, claiming Philadelphia does not welcome its opposing sports teams. The Giants team members remained patient, as seen on their social media posts and reactions. Temple University plans to add $1 million to its mental health services in response to the increased demand for such resources. A current national trend, Mark Denise, head of health and wellness services, observed that there, the need for extra help is especially needed following the pandemic caused isolation. He explained, quote, the demand for far exceeds our ability to provide the care at this point, end quote. With 18 mental health counselors currently available, Temple hopes to hire additional 10 to ease counselor stress. The money will go towards counseling sites to be located farther north on Broad. Temple also plans on refocusing on the mental health of its employees as well, initiating university-wide wellness days where classes are canceled and encouraged to focus on self-care. This will hopefully lead to an increase of mental wellness for all members of the community. By now, we have all heard about the terrifying event that took place during the Bills versus Bengals Monday night football game on January 2nd. Bills safety DeMar Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest after making a tackle in the first quarter and CPR and an AED were administered before he was rushed to the Cincinnati Medical Center. What most people may have overlooked is the one man who held everyone together during this tragic time. Sean McDermott, the Bills head coach, grew up in the Philadelphia suburbs and attended LaSalle College High School and then went on to be the defensive coordinator for the Eagles before his time with the Bills. McDermott kept his team together with compassion and poise throughout the time Hamlin was in the hospital as they were uncertain about his condition. Quote, Sean certainly is a true leader. They were very, very lucky they had a coach like Sean McDermott, unquote, said former football coach Jimmy Laycock. If anyone was capable of leading an NFL team through an emotional time, it is McDermott. Philadelphia is proud to claim Sean McDermott as his own.
The University of Pennsylvania is offering a program to Philadelphia high school students considering a career in nursing. Students will be able to observe nurses and clinicals at the hospital of the University of Penn and will have a chance for a mentorship, opportunities, hospital experience, and scholarships. Those who finish the program and pursue a degree in nursing at LaSalle University will receive scholarships on top of their federal grants and school scholarships, possibly creating a path to attend tuition free. Students will also have the chance for paid internships at the Penn Hospital to broaden their skills and knowledge. The goal of this program is not to only help students who've begun their career, but to hopefully help within the nationwide nursing shortage. And the hospital of the University of Penn is looking right here in our local community. We have one more break, but stay tuned to hear about how a sailor who was lost at sea survived. Stay tuned. This past Thursday, the U.S. wireless carrier T-Mobile said an unidentified malicious intruder breached its network in late November of last year to steal data on 37 million customers, including addresses, home numbers, and dates of births. The company also said the data did not include passwords or PINs, bank accounts, or credit card information, social security numbers, or other government IDs in filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, T-Mobile said that the company discovered the breach on January 5th of this year. T-Mobile said also in filing that does not expect the, late, the latest breach to have material impact on its operations. 27-year-old Elvis Francois spent almost a month lost at sea eating nothing but ketchup and food seasonings. The sailor says he was making repairs to his boat near the island of St. Martin in December when he was pulled out to sea due to bad weather conditions. Francois had no kind of knowledge about navigation and was found nearly 140 miles off the coast of Colombia when a plane saw the word help written on the hull of the boat. After being rescued, Francois said he tried to contact his friends, but it wasn't long before he lost service. The only food he had on the boat was ketchup, garlic powder, and maji which he used to make soup using rainwater. The Colombian Navy says he was found in good health, but he had lost weight, and they are working to help return him to his home country. Party supply company Party City filed for bankruptcy protection on January 17th. The company performed well financially and had strong growth before the pandemic hit, reaching a revenue of $2.35 billion in 2019. The company executes state in the bankruptcy filing that they knew the realtor faced financial troubles by November of last year and hired a retail consulting firm to determine how to proceed. Party City had reported $1 billion in assets and $10 billion in liabilities during the bankruptcy filing. However, Party City landed a $150 million bankruptcy loan with the intent of using half of the financing to pay employees and vendors on top of the other expenses. There are over 800 company-owned and franchise Party City stores across the North America. On January 18th, they announced that the stock trading would halt and stocks would be distilled, effective immediately. The candy company Mars is set to release packs of all-female M&Ms. These limited edition M&Ms will feature the purple, brown, and green M&Ms. Mars is also featuring an offer that people can nominate women who are flipping the status quo 
for a chance to be featured on various M&M's products and $10,000. Go out there and start flipping the status quo. In and out Burger fans will soon not to have to travel west to enjoy their animal style burger and fries. Restaurants are expected to open in the Nashville area by 2026. Bill Lee, the governor of Tennessee, says he expects to create 277 jobs and enthusiastically welcomes the chain to the state. He notes that the hamburgers are made from ground chunks, the fries come from potatoes, and milkshakes made from ice cream and milk. And in and out relies on real materials and fresh ingredients to make their iconic meals. What drink do Taco Bell lovers associate with their favorite meal? Yep, Mountain Dew's Baja Blast. Mountain Dew decided to expand on their popular soft drink and turn it into a hot sauce. You may be wondering how this is even possible. Well, the Baja Blast hot sauce incorporates the soda's tropical fruity flavors and heat from habanero and jalapeno peppers. Wondering how you can get your hands on a bottle of this limited edition hot sauce? Mountain Dew is giving some away through a contest on their website. Baja Blast fans can compete and complete an entry form that will indicate what dishes you would use the hot sauce for. Mountain Dew only made a very small amount of 750 bottles of it, so it's a hot commodity, no pun intended. Head over to MountainDew.com and enter for a chance to win this rare blue hot sauce. Well, I don't know about you, Aaron, but that hot sauce seems a little questionable to me. Me too. I'm not even a fan of hot sauce in general, but just the fact that it's blue yeah. has me suspicious. I think suspicious. that's what turns people away from it, from what we've gathered from it. Yeah, but like, then we also have Mountain Dew fanatics and hot sauce fanatics that just want to get their hands on a bottle. <laughs> they are entering yeah. the contest, and I think because it is so limited, as they only made 750 bottles, yeah. that does make people want to get it even more. Yeah. Um, how about the birds? I know. Um, we have our gear on desk today that is super exciting. We have so much going on in Philly right now. Like we talked about earlier, the tinsel bar that completely flipped and turned into an eagle's bar yeah. what are you going to check that out um i don't know uh, maybe if you come with me yeah i think <laughs> i think we should go check it out it's an iconic time in philadelphia right now and everything is so festive for the birds so yeah. we should definitely check it out i think so too well that just about does it for this episode of ltv news but be sure to find us on the web as well as the rest of LaSalle tv on our facebook page we love to hear your thoughts, so tweet at us using our Twitter handle and start the conversation. If you missed the scoop and want to see it, you can find episodes on our YouTube, LaSalle TV Philly page. Until next episode, from Tori, Donnie, Maddie, and the entire crew, I'm Erin Holly. Thanks for watching LTV News, where the action never stops. And go birds!